The views and opinions expressed on my story, Living with Lupus Podcast, represents each person's individual experience. By listening to this podcast or reading our blog, you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others. As always, consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. My Story Living with Lupus podcast is officially trademarked, all rights reserved. Thank you for joining me for another episode of My Story Living with Lupus Podcast. I'm your host, Susan Hendricks, and I'm so glad that you could join me on this Friday, May 28, 2021. Look, I, I was wondering about the connection with lupus and diabetes. Now, We know that lupus is an autoimmune disease, which simply means that the body creates antibodies which attacks its own tissues. Now, when it comes to diabetes, diabetes can be caused if the body is producing antibodies which attack the patient's insulin receptors. This is commonly the link when a patient has both diabetes and lupus. And by now, you have figured it out. Yes, this episode is about what connects lupus and diabetes. So, you know what I want you to do? All the way from the United States to Jakarta, Indonesia. That's right. Get ready to grab your cup of coffee, your cup of tea. And to my listeners, late at night, you know I appreciate you. So go ahead and grab your favorite glass of wine and join the conversation right here on my story, Living with Lupus Podcast. The Charlie E. and Minnie P. Hendrix Foundation for Chronic Illness Awareness giving hope and empowering those who suffer with chronic illness. See one, reach one, educate one to empower the masses. You can contact the foundation at 313-303-9217 or visit their website at HTT. P.S. colon forward slash forward slash C-E-M-P-H foundation dot com. This is a 501 C3 organization. No one should live in lack. All contributions are tax deductible. All right, and we're back. And the topic for this episode is what connects lupus and diabetes? As stated in the introduction, lupus is an immune disorder, a disease that causes the immune cells to attack healthy tissues. People don't immediately connect lupus and diabetes. 
but the chances increase that a person will develop diabetes when the person has lupus and a predisposition to problems with blood sugars. Now, people I know with lupus, the majority of them developed diabetes. Now, diabetes in most cases is more um, properly called diabetes mellitus, a condition wherein the body does not properly maintain insulin levels. When food or drink enters the body, it is broken down into forms the body can use, including a type of simple sugar called glucose. Insulin is a hormone made in the pancreas. It controls the amount of glucose in the blood and helps cells absorb it for fuel. Now, if the pancreas doesn't make enough insulin, the glucose levels in the blood um, are too high. And a person may experience diabetes symptoms, increased urination, unexplained weight loss, and if allowed to progress, nerve and blood vessel damage, increased risk of heart attack, stroke, and kidney failure sores and infections that don't heal are also common, particularly in the legs and feet, and may become severe enough that amputation is necessary. Now, there are two types of diabetes. Type 1, which destroys the cells that produce insulin and cannot be reserved in type 2, a resistance to insulin that most often develops as a result of overweight and obesity. Now, 90% of diabetes cases are type 2, as obesity causes the body to demand more insulin than the pancreas can produce. Now, for those that I know that have lupus along with diabetes, they have told me that due to them being on prednisone, at which prednisone causes an increase in your weight, it caused them to have diabetes. That's why it's so important for not only those of us with lupus, but for everybody to get a control on their weight. And it's hard for us, and I'm talking about people with lupus, to exercise. I understand that. But it's about the choices that you make when eating. And um, I have spoken about this in previous episodes. It's the choices we make. If you start off with a meatless Monday and um, you can then gradually increase to your meals being more healthier for you and you know what? There is, and I know you get tired of people saying this, but there is a possibility that you will feel much better 
making healthier choices such as those. And on Monday, you can go to mystorylivingwithlupus.com website and you will find recipes. I'm going to start putting up recipes every Monday. It will be a meatless Monday. Different recipes that I use um, will be on the site and also in um, a newsletter that we are in the process of putting out each month. It will be different recipes for you. When we return, we'll go further into what connects lupus and diabetes. So stay with me. Ophthalmology Associates, PC, Drs. Berman and Dr. Zuckerbrod, treating diseases of the eye and eye surgery. You can reach them at 313-341-3450. We are back. Let me tell you, um, last week, I was reading an opt-ed report titled, Diabetes is Not an Equal Opportunity Killer. Policy change and community intervention can help fight disparities. And You know, the unequal burden of diabetes on Black Americans highlights the need for both federal and local policy changes to mitigate risk factors contributing to diabetes deaths, poor insulin adherence, insufficient access to health care, and poor diet and physical inactivity. Now, we know that the price of medication is high, and some cannot afford to purchase their medication at all. Um, There are those in urban communities that have to make a choice between purchasing medication or paying a bill, purchasing medication or buying food. Now, taking insulin as prescribed, going to the doctor regularly, and eating fruits and vegetables may seem simple, you know, on the surface, but overarching societal issues like systemic racism can manifest insidiously, making simple solutions anything but for some communities. And within some communities, there exists food deserts. You know, no place to purchase quality meats, quality fruits and vegetables. And that's why I say that start off one day at a time with a meatless Monday. Now, while broadly addressing entrenched systemic issues is complex, the case of racial inequalities and inequities in diabetes mortality shows how analysis of a specific manifestation 
of the larger problem can lead to clear, targeted, and effective policy recommendations. Now, first and foremost, there needs to be a cap, not only on insulin, the cost of insulin, but on the cost of medication, period. It's too expensive, particularly for those with high deductibles. You know, um, the foundation that um, myself and my family formed We plan on holding classes once this pandemic thing is all over with to teach those in the community that if you make better choices when purchasing food, that what you place in your body will improve your health condition. When you make healthier choices, it improves your health. And I know some of you may say that I can't afford to purchase healthier choices, but you can. And on, like I stated before, on the My Story Living with Lupus website, um, you'll see, you'll see once I give you the breakdown on the cost, you'll see that it's more cheaper than, than purchasing processed foods. Now, type 1 diabetes, however, is believed to be an immune disorder problem similar in certain ways to lupus and perhaps connected to it as well. Unfortunately, diabetes and lupus share another type of connection, medications. Lupus is treated with corticosteroids, a drug form of the steroid stress hormones produced by the body, which cause the blood sugar levels to rise. Long-term use or high doses of these steroids, particularly prednisone, can trigger diabetes in someone already predisposed to it. Type 2 diabetes um, is the body's response to overweight and a poor diet. But type 1 results from an immune system attack. Type 1 diabetes and lupus both develop because of abnormalities in the B cells, a type of white blood cell responsible for identifying invading microorganisms or antigens such as viruses and bacteria. The immune system itself is a delicate balance of cell reactions. Increase and decrease, start and stop. Some cells trigger inflammation in response to infection or injury, a way of isolating the damage. Other cells recognize and destroy invaders, and yet another type halts this destructive process when it is no longer necessary. B cells can initiate an immune system reaction to antigens, 
of all kinds, which is why autoimmune diseases can have so many different forms and symptoms. A B cell antibody that cause type 1 diabetes is not the same as an antibody that causes lupus. However, recent studies show that B cells will stop producing both types of antibodies if the right proteins are present in the bloodstream. Scientists are currently testing ways to stimulate production of these cytokine proteins in the body or to introduce a synthetic form of IL-10 that can be that can do the same job. People with lupus or diabetes or both can improve overall health and relieve a number of symptoms just by making healthy choices as stated earlier. A diet with fruits, vegetables, lean meats, dairy, whole grains is a good first step. Adequate rest is also important and exercise is crucial both to control the weight and insulin levels and to increase energy and improve mood. A healthy diet and a commitment to a treatment plan will strengthen the body and help the immune system return to a state of balance and will make the treatment plan itself more effective. If you would like to appear on an episode of My Story Living with Lupus, you can contact us at mystorylivingwithlupus at gmail.com. Also visit us on our Instagram page and also our website, My Story Living with Lupus. so much for joining me for another episode of my story living with lupus um please visit my story living with lupus.com um please shop new items will be going up this weekend along with a sale 100 percent of all sales benefit the Charlie E. and Minnie P. Hendricks Foundation. That's how we assist those in need with medication and other personal care items. Look, if you're in the Detroit area, um, look for us on June the 13th, we will be feeding those in need. Also, I would like to leave you with this. And I know that you have heard this numerous of times, but here it goes. When one door closes, another door opens. But we so often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed doors that we do not see the ones which open for us. I'm Susan Hendricks for my story, Living with Lupus Podcast. 
I'll see you next Friday for another episode. Have a safe, peaceful, and oh-so-blessed weekend.